Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. It uh, has been a super, super long time. Um, I really only have time for one hobby at once, and right now uh, that hobby is uh, writing my novels. So uh, if you're a fan of uh, dark metaphysical science fiction, uh, please check out my books on Amazon. I'll uh, post a link in the show notes. But yeah, I haven't had much time really to think about uh, custom design or new mechs or anything like that. But what I have been doing is playing a lot of Lego with my kids. And as part of that, I've noticed the new uh, uh, Lego City Space Line coming out this season. Pretty, um, pretty cool stuff. And I, I couldn't resist when I saw uh, the Space Explorer rover. I looked at it and I was like, wow, that that's, uh, looks like something out of Mass Effect and uh, has a lot of potential. But as with everything, um, can't really leave well enough alone. So uh, I bought it with the intent to spruce it up a bit, but still keep it playable for my kids. So uh, that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, so why don't we start with, right now, uh, this is in a half modified, half unmodified state. So if we were to look at the original, um, you know, it has the... Uh, Seesaw suspension on the back, uh, suspension on the front, which is really admirable uh, for them to have put uh, suspension uh, front and back on a vehicle, uh, really at all. Now that said, the um, spring tension on these uh, pearlescent gold shocks, uh, it's really it's really tight. Um, so you'd really have to be pushing it down for it to uh, uh, activate. So um, I knew I wanted to change those out. Um, yeah, these wheels are interesting, but I prefer a more realistic look, so I knew I wanted to change those. Um, it's, this is in a kind of a half-modified state, but some of it carries through. Um, there's a lot of studs uh, exposed that I already cleaned up here on the top. But the other thing I really um, wasn't a fan of is it, very cool shaping on the top, but it has a really skinny look. Um, so you can ignore everything here. This is just poking through from where I've modified it on the back, but, um, really, you know, it, it just, it just looks kind of thin, right? It's, you've, you've got this kind of curving white canopy on the top and then nothing below. And particularly when you have this giant clearance of the suspension, um, it just didn't look very good. Uh, and then you also had this weird, uh, wheel well sticking out here for no real reason. Uh, maybe to maybe to block travel on, on the shock or something, but it just, it kind of, it was getting, th this one part here, removing that, uh, opened up all the opportunities to customize this. Um, what else? There are, um, I didn't like the, the cabin, so uh, if I was to pull this off now, um, side note, these used to be two parts, but I actually uh, joined them together for more structural uh, rigidity because you have this part on the back here that otherwise is a little bit flimsy. But what I was getting at is since the, um, since the windshield doesn't lever up, uh, these passengers would have to have gone out the back. And uh, the original, here's the, the discard pile. Well, part of, part of the discard pile. So the original cockpit was this rather miserable looking um, conglomeration of uh, brackets that weren't actually used. So these parts here, I, I think these are, um, uh, sorry, not brackets, um, blah, 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 blah. Can't think of the part name, but you can slip uh, minifigs in there, right? And you see this a lot with Lego Friends uh, as an alternative since they don't have uh, anti-studs on the bottom. But I don't understand what they did here because they put them on the front, but then you actually have to sit them on the back and it just wasted a lot of room. And this cockpit was just pretty unsightly all, all, all around. So I knew I wanted to make a nice cockpit. Um, side note, now I've been out of it for uh, at least a year. Uh, so I don't know if this is a new part, this inverted wedge with Technic holes. Um, I, again, it, it could just be that I haven't uh, been paying attention, but this really feels like a cheat part to me. I don't know, I, it's just, I, I get it, but... Uh, it has a bit of a Lego Juniors feel to it. So I ended up replacing this whole thing anyway, because in order to build out the bottom um, of the body, it would have had a wedge and then a wedge. So I actually ended up replacing this with a assemblage of normal Technic bricks um, braced with plates, uh, top and bottom. Uh, but anyway, so they had this cockpit um, and then in behind it, 
they had this kind of like firewall here. Um, and again, I don't really get it because move these out of the way. If you were in this vehicle and you know this doesn't open and you're expected to exit out the back, you know, like an APC or something, you wouldn't expect there to be you know, a wall blocking your way, which is, this is basically where that used to be positioned. So um, another goal I had was, uh, number one, make the cockpit really nice and give it a nice pass through with lots of storage. Uh, you could do whatever you want with this. You could, um, you could put uh, uh, half tile, half plates in there. So this could be almost more like a, a personnel carrier where you could put storage bins or whatever. But there's really, once you go rid of uh, this, uh, this pointless wall, uh, you know, the opportunities opened up um, and I really worked with a sunken floor to, to provide some, uh, uh, some more space there. Now it's possible this was there as a, you know, cross beam to add structural rigidity again, but this is really strong. There, there's a lot holding each wall down. Um, it's also held in by this pin here. It's held in by this attachment down here. Uh, so I'm not really worried. I'm going to hand this over to my kids to play with. And if something happens, I'll, I'll go from there. Um, now, when I first bought this, or rather before I received it, I was thinking, you know, maybe I'll go all out and I'll, I'll widen this uh, to be something more like one of my um, uh, APC builds, uh, one of my Dark Legacies APC builds, because I'd seen this part here in the pictures. And I was like, oh, sweet. This is some sort of new, like, inverted wedge. The possibilities of that are... Are endless but again this has a bit of a, a lego juniors feel to it because this whole structure top and bottom is one piece I, I just don't get it um like it looks cool on this build it's it's perfect for this build in the kind of dynamics it adds but um i would so much rather have had the opportunity to size this however i needed to um so anyways decided not to widen it just to optimize the uh cockpit there um, what else? Uh, I wanted to, uh, again, like I've shown on the other side, where it's very kind of scrawny, you know, you really just have the top. I wanted to give the notion of, you know, uh, uh, cladding on the bottom, so a full body coloring match on the bottom. So um, basically what I wanted there was, as you can see, um, you have the canopy come down here, this inverted black wedge there, and I define this kind of line of design here where the body would carry on underneath to give it some nice bulk and chunk, um, you know, with some uh, some grebling there. Because um, originally I was thinking, wow, this this is this seesaw is humongous. Like this this contraption is, you know, five times bigger than than what I uh, used on my uh, Crusader APC. And it's just it's just unnecessarily large, uh, so I may one day uh, come back to this. But um, the fact that it now has a uh, thicker thicker uh, profile overall balances out what used to be just a complete gap down there. Um, I uh, did I already talk about the tires? So yeah, tires are you know it's an interesting style, just not really for me. I really like the you know this kind of juicy kind of a uh, rover type tire here with the, the black rims. Um, and then I did a lot of color blocking. So I really wanted a clean black and white look with just a little bit of color for um, uh, uh, for flare. So I did keep a little bit of this new orange and these little power cells here that I attached to this faux suspension. Um, but other than that, I um, this would have been the original color blocking again. This side is the original side. So, um, you know, they had, I don't know why they chose, of all things, gray bricks with studs there. They should have chosen white. And they've got some of this orange going through uh, my least favorite Lego color uh, in the world, which is uh, pearlescent gold. Um, so a little bit of that they had throughout the build. Uh, and I really just wanted to clean it up. So I went with uh, black and white. Uh, the color blocking is not uh, my favorite on the inside. There's a nice kind of, you know, kind of uh, uh, wedgy thing there, but it's as good as I can get to keep it uh, um, the color blocked on the outside. And then here is uh, what I did for the cockpit. So I put in a couple of 
um, levers there, a keyboard. They had this cool printed piece. This was the only nice piece of the cockpit that came with the vehicle. Uh, although I really like the overall style here uh, that they went with. Um, uh, both this round kind of console here and even the way that they did this kind of wedge, uh, circle wedge with this headlight on the front, just really nice, really nice design cues. Again, really gives me some of those Mass Effect vibes. Um, so yeah, I just put in some panels there, plenty of room for two minifigs, uh, some uh, floor grills there kind of to give that effect. And... Um, let me see, what else is in the discard pile here? You know, a few, a, a lot around color blocking, like for some reason they used a gray Technic brick down here when they really should have used a black one. Not really consideration for overall aesthetic. This used to be gray, I made it black. Um, and that's uh, and that's about it. And yes, to confirm, I can even show this here. So where is the other one? So this is the, this is the um, the shock that came with the kit, and this is the one I'm replacing it with. And you can even you can see immediately that the one I'm replacing it with has less coils, so it's going to be a softer softer spring rate. Also looks better. Uh, doesn't have this hideous color on it. Um, but again, super props to Lego for uh, even making the effort. Uh, really cool. And um, uh, I think that is everything. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and convert this whole thing and uh, I'll show you what it looks like. complete. Okay. Actually, I'll pause here and I'll show you um, what I mean about the uh, interior. So originally, uh, this whole part here, which actually connects via um, pins to two bricks here and on the front, to this cross beam or cross Technic brick here. That used to be this part that conveniently has the holes in front. So all I did is I put together a uh, rectangle using uh, regular bricks um, and then uh, one by two Technics at every corner, Technic bricks at every corner. 
to attach the, the old mounting spots. So to attach to these dark gray ones here, here, and to this Technic brick there. You'll know what I mean. This is a one by six if you have this model. Um, and that just allows you to create um, this underbody without having a wedge and a wedge. I may have constructed this differently if I was doing it from scratch, but uh, actually it turned out pretty good and very stable. So here you can see um, the differences in color blocking. This is the new one, this is the old one. Um, obviously it's a lot more uniform on the new one. And on the outside, you can see my plating. Uh, I followed the natural curve of the body here into the rear wheels on the new one. And the old one is quite, quite minimal. Um, so as far as plating goes, you know, just gather up a bunch of slopes and tiles and, you know, small plates to attach them, wedge plates, and uh, see what see what works for you plating wise. Um, I went for a grill here, uh, which fits underneath the canopy, uh, and again, just remove some visible studs. But this whole this whole assemblage here is connected to these two uh, one by four bricks with studs. Same as on the old, except they were light gray for some reason. Um, all that work just for this little thing here. So I'm going to change the old one now to the new one and see if I uh, get this right. I just used a just a one by one black round plates there, which is one of my favorite kind of detail pieces. I use in I use like a hundred per Mac probably, just for something that kind of looks mechanical. Let's see, I've already converted the top. This is where the cross beam used to attach. Uh, is that the same as it used to be? Yes. So now I need my new bricks with studs. Hopefully this is all reasonably within focus. Sometimes it's hard to tell while you're recording and iPhones can be a little bit skittish. Looks like a one by 10 plate. Put on there. And a one by three plate. Does that look right? And we're gonna replace this plate here with what did I do? I did a now this could very well have been a um, one by six plate all the way through, but clearly I was running low on parts. White is not something I carry a ton of, which shouldn't come as a surprise given I work mostly in black. So I need six across and then a grill. All right. Does that look correct? Sure does. All right, gotta go find me a grill. The funniest part of this mod was uh, I ended up having to use a lot of my kids' parts. Because again, these are not colors I typically have. Although I also, after I had finished scavenging all my kids' parts, realized that um, I had uh, an old Ninjago set that I had experimented with with that new uh, joint that they introduced a year or two back. Um, but uh, it is what it is. All right, new 
uh, side plating is ready to go. So I will undo this little bit of simpleness. And then I have the new one ready to go here. Let's see. This goes like so. And then I just, again, use these one by one round plates. I, I just love them. It's like my favorite Lego part. They can look like whatever you imagine, you know, like springs or metal components or hoses or what have you. Actually, I had thought of using some hoses on this build just because I I love hoses, but um, there wasn't a natural place to to fit them. All right, uh, and then I have this new thing here. So on the old model, um, at the back, it was just uh, just nothing. It was just kind of hung like that with an empty space. So again, easy opportunity to just fill up a space um, to add to the shaping, and then it's going to connect to those bits over there. Um, and then, yeah, we'll be good to go. So this is now ready to attach. Oh, my favorite sound. Okay, so we now have two um, side panels. This is the new one. I also added these little bits here because didn't want any unsightly studs. I left the old uh, antenna over here. I suppose I could put something on there. Do I want to put something on there? Uh, what have I got handy in my pile of randomness? Uh, I'll do it later. Um, okay, so that's really the majority of the modifications. You can see everything I've done here in the new cockpit again. Uh, just a combination of these um, half-studded tiles are really good for minifigs, so they don't get full clutch. They're a bit easier to take in and out. And um, yeah, so we'll put it all back together now. did get the inverted wedge for that. So again, lots of connection there. It's really strong, um, particularly when the roof is on now that it's coupled. And there's also, you know, a pin that goes in here. You know, if I, if I, squeeze it. I'm not getting any kind of flex. Uh, but again, if that uh, cross brace ends up being needed, I'm sure I can come up with something just along the roof that'll still allow it to be a, a pass through in the, the cabin. All right, front, nice and squishy, way softer than before. And then I have some new axles for my wheels, if I can find my parts. And uh, I just swapped the yellow axles to black so that they uh, look better. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. The only thing I'd also like to have changed, but I didn't actually have the parts for, is um, I think that these beams that they use here uh, for the suspension would have looked uh, better uh, as a light gray. Uh, they'd be more suspension-y looking. When they're black, they kind of get lost in the in the color blocking of the body. Uh, so I think that would differentiate them nicer. So I might order myself some on BrickLink. 
I think they would just look better. And I might reduce the bulk of this one day um, so it doesn't look so kind of gnarly from the bottom. I could, I could, I could tidy this up. Um, I just feel like it already extends so far down I didn't want to. So I focused on the underbody where you can see it. So I'll finish that off now. It's just so nice to finish the underbody of a vehicle. You know, you, you're not always gonna see it, but when you do, it's just like, ah, oh, this is this is cool, this is nice. I like to use these um, uh, fan pieces as details for, for greebling on the underside. So that gives you the nice color blocking. Um, so you have this notion of a curve that goes down here and then all the way around. And then again, this black wedge here matches the canopy, which is hiding on me. Nice. It's probably look good in white too, actually. I just don't have a white one, so maybe I'll order one to see what that looks like. I'll post uh, on Instagram as I, if I continue to tweak this. Again, these grills look really nice here. No more studs, and you have plenty of plenty of grip on um, on the front here. If anything, it's nice that you can remove this even more easily. Uh, and then our new roof, easier to attach by opening the hatch. And there you have it. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty sweet, I think. Yeah, it's definitely more responsive. So if I was to go over my hairy hand, you get a nice suspension action there. Whereas before it was really, really quite rigid up front. There you go. The new and improved Space Explorer Rover. Thank you for joining me. And uh, it's good to be playing again. I don't know the next time I'll be doing a, a new original build, another original build, but I'm having a really good time. Oh, come on, Roof, what are you doing here? Having a good time uh, modifying some of these newer LEGO builds. Uh, they've got a lot of potential. I love that they're doing a unique thing for space that is not Star Wars, because uh, really, how many times do you need the same Star Wars set over and over? Um, it's just got a cool look, uh, very neutral, um, but can look uh, even better. So I might, uh, I might take on the command rover next but it's pretty pricey in canada and it's pretty ugly um so it would require quite a lot of work to uh, improve it it's especially got that big wedge on the front it's like a big technic wedge because they didn't feel like designing a front end but it'll be pretty fun to have both of them so uh, i don't know if i'll be able to resist that's what i got thanks very much if you want to support me um smash that like button, subscribe. Uh, if you're into science fiction and you are 18 and over, consider checking out my books. Until next time.